Adventist Emmanuel Lutheran Church. It is the second Sunday in Advent. Today, as our collect says, we cry out to God to stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. The collect sets the theme for the Sunday, and this Sunday we remember how God sent his servants to prepare the way for the Lord, and how he yet still prepares us today for his coming in our midst, even now, in preparation for when he does return. With that, we remember Christ does come to us in his word and sacrament. We celebrate the Lord's presence and his body and blood. Our liturgy is in the bulletin. If you please rise for our opening hymn, number 349. of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, you were favorable to your land. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You withdrew all your wrath. Restore us again, O God of our salvation. And we'll your indignation us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you not revive us again? Yes, we will your to you. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. Let 
Surely His salvation is near to those who hear Him. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Faithfulness springs up from the ground. Yes, the Lord will give what is good. Righteousness will go before Him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, <coughs> comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of, Jeru of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 2 Peter 3. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, 
and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the day of, the, of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the hymn. text for our sermon this morning is the gospel reading just read, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. God's grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
please be seated. Today we hear that Christ, that God coming to his people in Christ Jesus was not just a one-time event. It wasn't just one and done. Advent is the recognition, the intentional slowing down and recognizing that Christ still comes to us. And today we pray that we would not forget that we come only to God through the merits of Christ Jesus, that it is by faith we are prepared for his final coming. Now our house, perhaps like yours, has changed quite a bit these last few days. There's preparations being done for Christmas. Furniture has been rearranged to make room for a tree The fireplace has wood stacked right by it because, well, the temperature's dropping. We anticipate more frigid nights below 60 degrees cover the faucets. We're also excited at the prospect, yes, of people visiting our home for the holidays. We are preparing the way for Christmas and all the joy that accompanies it. In life, we prepare for trips, we we prepare for tests, for people when they visit. Rarely are we ever prepared for someone, though, just at the drop of a hat. You know, the usual banter. Hi, just thought I would stop by. I'm so sorry. Excuse the mess. If I had known we were to have visitors, I would have cleaned up. God had always told his people he would visit them. When God visits, things should be in order. In many and various ways, God did visit his people. He sent angels and messengers, prophets and priests. He came in a cloud and a pillar of fire. He used judges and even foreign kings to come to his people to be messengers. But those means by which he came to his people were always lacking. The messengers were either, they either insufficiently prepared God's people or they themselves led God's people astray. In Genesis, God said he would send his messenger, his servant Moses, to lead the people to prepare them to leave Egypt. You remember this was the institution of the Passover. God would come to his people, but he would intentionally not come to their houses. It was the blood of the lamb that covered the door, and they were spared God's presence and his judgment. Moses was the Lord's messenger, preparing the people, but Moses himself sinned. This servant, this messenger, was insufficient. He did not trust God's word when he was told to speak to the rock. Moses struck the rock, contrary to God's instruction, and he didn't enter the promised land. Moses couldn't carry the people because he too, messenger as he was, was a sinner. God then said, I will send someone greater than Moses. Would this servant prepare the people adequately? Would the people be readied for God to arrive at their homes any day? And what of God arriving at our homes? Our church? Would you be hurried? Would you hide the mess on the floor, throw the clothes into the closet, stuff it in, close the door with both hands, keeping it all hidden away, as if we have the appearance of having it all together. Out of sight, out of mind, right? But you know as well as I that God is not one who only searches outward appearances, but even our hearts. Jeremiah 17, 10, God speaks through the prophet, I, the Lord, am one who searches the heart and examines the mind. Where will you hide the thoughts of despair because our life has been completely turned upside down the last year? Where will you hide your thoughts of disappointment because life doesn't go the way you think it should? 
God says to trust him in all circumstances. And have you forgotten that? Under what rug would you sweep your pride when you look at others in disdain because, well, they just don't have their house in order like you do? Perhaps the author of Hebrews had this in mind when he says, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The prophets, beginning with Moses, sent to prepare the people, but they didn't listen. And the prophets themselves fell short. Exodus wasn't the only time God sent messengers to prepare his people. The priests, they too were sent to prepare the people. They were to instruct and to offer the mandated sacrifices. They and only they could stand before God and offer the sacrifices. In the book of Malachi, the priests led the people astray. They offered polluted sacrifices, meaning they didn't offer the required sacrifices that God demanded on behalf of the people. And imagine that for a second. God demanded sacrifices, pure and holy sacrifices, and the priests were the only ones who could offer them. If you were not a priest, you couldn't even sacrifice to God if you wanted. There were people who tried to offer sacrifices that weren't priests, and God struck them down. For their disobedience to his word, even we could maybe say, well, their hearts were in the right place. And God says, no, they weren't, because they did not obey my word. When the priests didn't follow God's word, it resulted in anger, and the people were at their mercy. But in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, God says, though the priests have failed me, I will send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. God has made us his priests, a royal nation, and would we give him our first fruits? God, being a visitor to our house, would we not present before him the good food except we offer the leftovers from the night before? And they've been sitting out on the counter, offerings and tithes, setting time aside for Bible study, even in the midst of this pandemic and nonstop political theater, have you become distracted from learning something new about God's word? In this short time, we've all become experts in epidemiology. We all know the numbers of cases and recoveries. Would that we paid the same attention to God's word. So it fits in perfect with the Old Testament that Mark today in our reading begins with a quote from the Old Testament. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. This is directly from Malachi 3.1. That Mark saw this in Malachi as a prophecy of Christ coming because priests, prophets, kings, they all fell short and we do too. Here today, Mark starts with this from Malachi 3.1. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. But if you notice something interesting, you notice that Mark doesn't mention Malachi. He says, as the prophet Isaiah wrote. Some people think Mark made a mistake here. They point this out as a a mistake in the scriptures. They say Mark should have known that that was Malachi, not Isaiah, that said that. However, this is a common way for the writers of the New Testament to quote the Old Testament. When they are quoting multiple prophets, they will name only the major prophet. Paul does this in Romans 9 with Isaiah and Hosea. Matthew also does this in his gospel with Isaiah and Zechariah. When the writers of the scriptures quote two prophets together, 
the Holy Spirit guided them to only name the greater prophet Isaiah. But Mark is preparing his hearers and us for how we rightly prepare ourselves for Christ to come. He places us in the long line of sinners from the Old Testament to this very day that need to be prepared for Christ's coming. But as Moses himself, the priests of the Old Testament, and all the people who saw the goodness of God, how can we rightly prepare ourselves? We've seen in our own lives how insufficient we are. We've heard of the failings and sins even of Moses and the very prophets that saw fire coming down from heaven. And do we think we prepare ourselves rightly? Well, as Mark shows us in the gospel, it isn't our preparing that moves Christ to come to us. For when would we be prepared enough? When would we be able to sit back and say, yes, I have enough of my own good merits. I've done enough. I've donated enough. Do you remember the story when Jesus dropped by the house of some friends? When he was a visitor to Mary and Martha? Martha was busy, 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 but Mary, she sat at Jesus' feet in peace listening and holding on to Jesus' words, letting Jesus prepare her. That's what Mark is doing for us today as he points us to the words of John the Baptist during Advent. To relearn what it means to prepare rightly for Christ to visit us. Mark tells us, listen to the story of God's messenger, another one that he sent, John the Baptist, that God continues to serve his people, to send his messengers, even when God's people would wander away from him that wouldn't keep God silent, that, God was, that John was God's servant preparing the way. How? John preached repentance. He calls us to confess our sins, to confess that we don't rightly prepare. But too often we do think it's all up to us to make life just right. And when it doesn't turn out, we turn to despair. We try so hard to carry around so many burdens, thinking we have to get everything figured out. We'll get the politicians figured out. We'll get the CDC figured out. If I just do things the right way, I won't have any problems in life. I'll never lose my job if I just perform. My schoolwork will always be perfect if I just try hard enough. Our kids will turn out perfect if we sign up for all the right classes. I'll find the perfect spouse if only I, if only I, if only I. But no, John says, repent, for you are worried about many things. God sent his servant to prepare the way for the final servant, for Christ Jesus. Not just back in the old days, but even among you today. Do you hear his servant speaking? The words of John echo in our ears, and they should, for the word of the Lord endures forever. We are not different than the people standing at the Jordan. This isn't just for the Advent season. We are continually to be prepared through repentance and faith. The lessons of Advent are for you daily. It is a daily lesson because we sin much, we clutter our homes, our hearts, and our minds. John comes to prepare us for Christ, to clean it out. Christ is, was sent and is sent to us now to bring us peace. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you peace. How did God prepare his people through John the Baptist? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 
they all say John came baptizing. That John the Baptist baptized people into an eternal preparedness of being ready for God's appearance. That John pointed to the work of Christ and that through his word and the water, John gave the people, as we are told in verse 4, forgiveness of sin. What greater peace could there be? That your sins are washed away in baptism. That even though it was John the Baptist standing on the banks of the Jordan, it was the work of Christ. That, and that's where God prepares you and makes you his own. He comes in with the cleansing blood of Christ and doesn't just bury your sins in the closet. He doesn't put them under the rug for someone to come and find and point out every mistake you've made. No. The blood of Jesus Christ is a full and complete cleansing, a washing away in the waters of baptism, a new birth. And we are to remember this daily. Not that I was baptized, but I am baptized. A new house you are prepared for Christ to dwell in. You are the very dwelling place of Christ. He takes residence up in you. John's baptism was tied to the Jordan River. It gave forgiveness of sins, as we see and hear. It's not different from ours. It was John the Baptist standing there baptizing, but it was the working of Christ. That's what Mark is telling us by quoting John the Baptist at the end, when he says, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John isn't con contrasting his baptism with Jesus' baptism. The baptism is the same working of God. The baptism is the same, cleansing of sins, but that it is all the work of Christ. You see John doing the baptism with water, but it is Jesus giving the forgiveness of sins, even though you don't see it. Even though it is a pastor baptizing you, it is Jesus coming in, and doing a complete cleansing by his blood. That is how you can have peace in a world that has gone mad. Christ Jesus was prepared, and he himself offered the sacrifice. He knew his cross would come, and yet he welcomed it as preparation for you to be made perfect before the creation of the universe. His death, his resurrection, is how he promises you, you are prepared, you are ready. That is why Peter in our epistle can say, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish, blemish and at peace. The only way you can be found at peace is if you're not looking to yourself, but Christ Jesus. The one who is greater than Moses, the one who is our great high priest, the one who never failed and never fails you now. Even when you do see all the ways in which you failed, Christ says, take heart. I have overcome your sin. So, do we welcome him into our homes? Are our homes a place where his word is heard and taught? Is our, are our homes Places where the Bible stories are taught and the forgiveness of Christ is spoken to one another. We get so worried about preparing for life, preparing for college, preparing for high school, preparing for retirement. Being in God's word is the most important preparation you can do. This is the most important thing you can do for your children for one another, and even for yourself. For God's word will not fail you. You've seen it in his son, Jesus Christ, that not even death keeps him away from you. You are prepared and ready.
May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together we rise and confess the Nicene Creed as found on page 10. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today in our prayers, we continue to remember those listed on page 17. And also this morning, we remember the Spagnolo family at the death of uh, their friend Matt, who died on Saturday. We pray for Matt's family and his wife, Lisa, in their time of sadness. Let us pray for the whole church in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you sent messengers and servants to your people to call them to repentance and faith and trusting in your work that by your Son, Jesus Christ, you have prepared us. You have made us ready for your return. Grant that we would keep this faith, that we would pass it down as a treasure, that we would hand it to the next generations, and that even now we would be found faithful as the apostles and prophets gave to us. Lord, in your mercy. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. As you led Joseph like a flock, so now by your Son, Jesus Christ, lead us into straight paths. Bring us out of the bondage of our sins and plant us securely in your eternal promises. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, in your blessed patience, you send your prophets and apostles, pastors and teachers in all time, that sinners would not perish, but rather reach repentance and find comfort in your word, which alone stands forever. Preserve the servants of your church. Give to our congregation and all congregations an increase of hope that we may await the revealing of the new heavens and the new earth that we would live lives of holiness and godliness, being diligent to be found without spot or blemish and at peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, Holy Lord, preserve your gift of marriage against the ravages of sin, the schemes of the devil, and the raging of the world. Bless the couples and families of our congregation. Strengthen them in love and care for one another and establish them on the foundation of your word. Be with all those who desire a spouse yet have not been gifted one. Preserve them in pure lives, dear Heavenly Father, that they may also rejoice in your goodness. Be with all young people and children. May they desire to be students and to hear your word. Be with all teachers that they would teach the wisdom of the scriptures. Lord, in your mercy. 
God of all comfort, your word alone endures forever. The nations of the world come and go before you. Even kings and rulers are like grass before your breath. Preserve us from placing our trust in princes and mortal men. Give us leaders who will rule after your good pleasure, keeping order and protecting life, that we may live in godly quietness and honesty. Be with our president, all of our representatives in our government, our judges and magistrates, our local authorities, our police, firefighters and first responders, that in turn, dear Heavenly Father, we would live lives of honor as citizens obeying the law. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who defend us, defend us in foreign lands. Grant the members of our military courage and clarity of mission. Preserve them, dear Heavenly Father. Grant them peace, even those separated from their family, with the look forward of a reunion. We pray, O oh Lord, you would be with them and their families in a time of war and a time of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, hear us for all that we pray. We especially remember Randy, Tom, Bob, Ruth, Misty and Harper, Lorraine, Paul, Paul, Jean, Art, and those we remember silently to ourselves. Lord, sustain them in their faith. Give them your Holy Spirit at this time as their cross gets heavy, that you would give them peace that they may endure. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, by the death of Matt, you have shown us that your thoughts are not our thoughts, nor your ways our ways. We thank you for the blessings of body and soul that you bestowed on the departed. Comfort the members of the Mucklebauer family who mourn his death and assist us ever to prepare for your final summons when we will depart and be with Christ in blessedness and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you once prepared the way for your only begotten Son through the preaching and baptism of John. Prepare now your baptized Christians with true repentance and faith that seeks forgiveness that we would worthily eat and drink Christ's true body and blood in unity, in life and doctrine, in this blessed sacrament. Give us a hunger and a thirst for peace, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. And teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.